Hello and welcome back. So this is the final chapter of our in Linux interview questions. It's uh, towards the advanced level. Uh, let's get started. So the first question is, how can you enhance the security of a Linux system? Over here, it's uh, it's just uh, asking you uh, a question that could be asked about any of the uh, operating system. So uh, you don't have to be a specific answer because all of them involve patching that is keeping the system update strong password no brainer minimizing the use of root access in windows is just admin uh ad administrator account well, what we do is we disable root or um, and then create in other account that is close um, may or may not be admin like the name of the account uh, but it will have granular admin uh, permissions to go and do the stuff that you would normally do with Linux, uh, root uh, configuring firewalls host on the host yes we do that uh, most of the time we install qualies uh, if not then we'll use the host or firewall to uh, block whatever uh, needs uh, it's usually it's a procedure policy that defines what needs blocked and enable SE Linux or App Armor. These are tools that you can install and um, secure your Linux operating system. Here, one more thing that is not listed but should be mentioned, and probably that's what most of the people will be looking for is um, mentioning to disable any unnecessary services for example if you're running a web server you probably may not want ssh enabled on it question number two can you describe load balancing and how it works in linux so load balance balances balancing basically just distribute workload and there are a few ways uh, most common are either a the one that is standby the other one that is both are taking the load uh in the standby method there is a heartbeat involved heartbeat basically just keeps uh looking at the active uh web server or any server uh, for that matter and uh, after like a couple of second interval see if the server is up or not and if it detects that the server is not responding it's halted frozen whatever or it's even if it's just rebooted on its own for uh, out of a glitch it uh, brings up the standby server and that server starts taking and um, um, taking the request the and responding to them the other way the hot pot is where both ser uh, servers are active and load balancer proxy server basically distribute the request to them it could be one by one or it could be whatever the interval is specified. So load balancing distributes workloads across multiple computing resources in Linux. This can be achieved with software like Nginx or App Proxy. Question number three, explain the role of SSH in Linux. How can it be secure? SSH, we all use it very common to remotely log into a system. Uh, may It may be a web server, or it could be any server, your router switches, anything is a, SSH is a protocol to securely connect to a remote server. It can be secured by using key pairs for authentication and disabling root login. So root login disabling is pretty much guaranteed. You, you, you normally, uh, you connect with your own username and password given that you have the permission for uh, remote logins. And of course you have to have that key pair. Question number four, describe a situation where you might use change root in Linux administration. So change root basically changes the root directory for the current running processes. What happens is that everything is being run in your under you. Uh, with change root, you give it to a new directory. It's commonly used in system recovery, running older version software, and testing new software. So it's this question I I don't remember ever asked. So. How does Linux use swap space? How should it be sized relative to system memory? Um, swap space is exactly the same thing as in Windows. If you ever uh, 
looked around in Windows. There is a page file that says something like that. That is your swap file. Um, back in the day when RAM was pretty much expensive and Windows XP was new, uh, I believe that was the time when it was pretty much hot topic. Now RAM is cheap, it's everywhere, nobody requires a swap space, everybody has more than enough RAM. Uh, like per, standard is pretty much 16 uh, GB now, so that's more than enough. But swap space is basically it uses part of your hard drive as a uh, paging file that uh, uh, operating system unloads uh, memory contents into that page file uh, based on the need and then it can uh, retrieve it from there. Uh, and it should be sized depending on your system's memory, workload and performance. Normal is one to two times of the size of the RAM installed in that system. Question number six. Explain LVM and why it might be used on a Linux server. So LVM, logical volume, volume management, allows for more flexible disk management. It can create a virtual layer over physical storage, allowing for easier resizing and management of disk space. So LVM, um, I don't think so any uh, home user, normal home user would ever use. This is more for a, a cloud environment where you want to allocate all that or uh, enterprise environment for the disk management. Uh, it, the closest in Windows environment, if uh, anybody has a done, have ever done uh, server administration, there you can allocate uh, disk quotas to your users so they don't end up using all of the disk space. <clears throat> um, and very, very common in our um, corporate environment. Question number seven. What is SE Linux and how does it impact improve Linux security. Security enhanced Linux is, uh, is additional, it's, it provides additional access control mechanism beyond traditional ones in Linux. It helps limit the damages from a compromised system. So as a Linux, basically it's a um, military level uh, protection. Um, it uses the um, tags, labels, and granule control where uh, air, the user is checked uh, for ejection that it is authorized or not explain the concept of virtualize virtualization in linux how do tools like docker and kubernetes fit into this so <clears throat> virtualization has two parts one part is with exsi hyper v virtual box uh, type one and type two virtual um, environments where you install the whole operating system to run the application in docker uh, containerization the virtualization uh, removes the of all of the operating system and the underlying in operating system shares the app containers uh, so in essence if you for example hyper-v windows you have been uh, you, you have Windows installed and you can write beside another virtual machine can have Linux, but with container containerization, if it's a Linux environment, the base uh, uh, operating system is Linux, that base Linux will share its kernel with all of the apps on top of it in running in containers. The, so it's faster, easier, uh, less resource. Uh, being consumed uh, in containerization. Virtualization allows for running multiple operating systems on a single physical machine. Docker is used for containerization, while Kubernetes is a system to manage containerized applications. EP is a command used for pattern searching in Linux. It searches for the patterns specified in the command line in a given file. Question number nine. How do you automate system tasks in Linux? What tools would you use? I believe we saw this question in our uh, very first video. Uh, Chrome, and uh, you can, if you have a GUI interface, uh, you can mention that, but since it's advanced level, uh, pretty much it's expected that you will be talking everything about terminal commands so you will mention cron and uh, 
I will strongly suggest that go and uh, look up in Chrome like what uh, what the syntax is and how to run it. For example, when when I did, it was just a Chrome job set up to uh, pull some feeds. Question number 10, the final question. What are the different fields in Etsy password and Etsy shadows? So this question uh, is uh, just asking for different fields. Um, but uh, in most of the time in question uh, in interviews, it can be about what's stored in Etsy password or it will simply say, where are the passwords stored? So you just need to know the concept so you can answer question accordingly. So Etsy password contains user information and Etsy shadow is where actual passwords are stored. So these passwords are stored in an encrypted hashed file uh, in Windows at SAM for directory, SAM file. Uh, it's with uh, I believe it's system32 slash SAM uh, folder. So uh, the hashed files are the hash of your password for example if your password is one two three it won't be stored as one two three what will happen is what uh, your web server or your local machine whatever uh, it will hash one two three store that hash and when you enter at your login prompt to your windows machine or you're logging to a web server the the system will hash whatever you enter into that password field hash it and check the hash against the stored hash. If the hash matches, you're allowed to log in. Otherwise, it will prompt that embedded login. All right, so these are the 10 questions from advanced. I will not stop here. I will go search, uh, especially if you are Linux uh, uh, interview, uh, they can ask you about anything in Linux environment and all of the questions will be about um, terminal hardly ever will be about GUI interface uh, the other thing is um, that uh, you don't have to um, don't so don't think that they would ask you 20 questions they will ask you probably less than five never more than that and that will be enough for them to assess you if you know the stuff or not. Uh, make sure that you don't give them one-liners. Just keep talking, two-way street. It's a conversation. Hope this helps you. If it has, please rate, comment,